Thank you very much, Renuka. Do please feel free to uh, stop by the post. There's great work that's being done. Uh, Renuka's talked about collaboration. I think we need to move on to collaboration in a, a bigger scheme of things with the, uh, an update on the ICRN, the International Cholangiocarcinoma Research Network. And I think uh, Melind uh, and Mitesh uh, are both going to come and uh, join us and update us on that. Thank you, Juan. Uh, so I'm very happy to give an update on the International Cholangiocarcinoma Research Network. And uh, this was established um, one, a year ago because we realized even in, in this room, cholangiocarcinoma, while it is an important disease in America, it is a relatively rare one. And it presents a significant problem in different parts of the world, particularly Asia, uh, where we have no representation and to truly make an impact on this disease and to cure this disease, we cannot do it alone um, sitting in this room in Salt Lake City. So we established this network uh, a year ago, uh, and I'm in the next few minutes, I'm going to review the... Uh, is this how you do it? I'm going to review our goals give some background of why this International Cholangio Research Network is necessary, uh, give some progress over the past year, and in that I'm also going to ask uh, my, my colleague Robert Lewis from, uh, Lewis Roberts from uh, Mayo Clinic to give an update. And uh, plans for 2017 uh, will be presented by Mitesh Borad, also from Mayo Clinic. So I'm very fortunate that uh, I have uh, uh, collegiality and uh, support from a very accomplished group of uh, investigators in this disease. So our goal is basically to increase clinical trials in this disease, increase access, for, uh, access to trials for cholangiocarcinoma patients. We want to increase international outreach, so that requires collaborative research with different countries. And then we want to promote translational research, research from the lab, research from um, patient cells and blood to actual uh, development of new drugs in the clinic. And this is a very broad, uh, all-encompassing theme. And our small component of that would be to develop a biorepository of patient blood, patient t tumor tissue, so that will be a valuable uh, resource for research. So there's a big deficit of clinical trials in cholangiocarcinoma. Multiple myeloma is a, uh, occurs at a relatively higher incidence, but not that much more but they have 241 patients. A disease with a very similar incidence is acute lymphoblastic leukemia. It has almost 180 trials, three times what we have in cholangiocarcinoma, 60. And these 60 trials, a lot of them represent devices, uh, represent stenting, and by no means are they unimportant, but they're not really gonna cure the disease. So why is there a deficit in cholangiocarcinoma? Uh, I do not clearly know why. But there is a perception that it is a rare disease, but the fact is actually it's increasing worldwide. It, the perception is that accrual to trials is slow, but all of us who investigate this disease, we have no spots for patients to enroll in. The thought is that there's a poor outcome, but contrast that to other solid tumors, lung cancer, pancreas cancer, it's really no different. Um, there's very limited translational research, but all of us treat other GI cancers and in fact, cholangiocarcinoma is enriched with more actionable mutations than any other GI cancer. So this is really a low-hanging fruit for pharma, and that brings along the next point, is there's no drug yet approved for cholangiocarcinoma. And so that opens up opportunity. There's great opportunity for orphan drug development, and we want to facilitate that, and we want to encourage pharma to come to the table. So speaking of the international uh, uh, incidence of cholangiocarcinoma, the incidence in the US is about 1.67 per 100,000. If you look at Thailand, <coughs> the incidence in northern Thailand is about 85 per 100,000. So it's almost 85 times as common as in the US. If you look at China, it's seven per 100,000. Korea, seven per 100,000. So this is a disease that occurs at a relatively high frequency in Asia. And this is reflected by the numbers. In US, you have 5,000 patients. In UK, uh, John and Juan have been really prolific, but they only see 1,200 patients. Contrast that with Thailand, 
uh, 10,000 patients, Japan, 25,000 patients, and astounding 60,000 patients in China, and 5,000 in Korea. So why does it occur at a higher frequency in, internationally? We know one is that hepatitis B is more common in those countries. In Thailand, uh, there is, uh, in the northern Thailand, um, there's an incidence of liver fluke infestation, which is from um, raw, uncooked fish. And uh, I love Thai food, but not ra raw, uncooked fish. Uh, that carries a deadly risk of liver fluke infestation. And then there's increasing realization that cholangiocarcinoma occurs as a result of uh, exposure to toxins. So very interesting data from Japan that uh, you know workers in the print printing press industry have a high risk of cholangiocarcinoma. So integral to success for any research network, you need a very strong advocacy group. And I'll give you examples like pancreas cancer. Pancreas cancer has PANCAN, and they have a very, uh, uh, a very big initiative now called the Precision Promise Multiple Myeloma Research Consortium. I think we have the ingredients for success in this community because of Cholangiocarcinoma Foundation and the work that Stacy, Mary, Mary, and all have done. So these are our three initiatives that we have focused on the last, last year. One is the Industry Night, and the goal of Industry Night is to bring pharma to the table to, so to incentivize uh, the pharmaceutical industry so that they will invest in this disease, develop new drugs in this disease. And for that, we have organized a symposium at, at this meeting. It started at ASCO 2016, where we invite, invited several of our industry partners. They will present their information on new drugs that have potential for the disease, and we will hopefully pad, uh, show the path forward. So I'm going to ask Sean, uh, Sean Turbill right there, uh, to come to the to the microphone there if, if you can. So we are very fortunate that we have Sean uh, as, a, as a volunteer and a board member. Sean comes with tremendous experience from the pharmaceutical industry. And he has liaison with over 800 companies to pull this off together, and credit goes to him. Do you want to make a comment? Sure, thank you, Melinda. You're too kind. But uh, yeah, so tonight's going to be our second annual industry night. Um, reception starts at 6 PM. It's a VIP-only reception. So we'll have uh, refreshments and, and hors d'oeuvres. And then starting at 7 p.m., we'll have our first uh, industry presentation. There are five presentations in closed doors. And I want to thank, one, our industry colleagues for putting those presentations together, and two, our force power, clinical uh, mind power, if you will, if that's a good way of summarizing it, but uh, for being in that room and providing guidance to, uh, to our industry colleagues. So I think there'll be good synergy to uh, help accelerate um, clinical trial uh, development. So thank you, everybody. So I remember just two years ago, we had, I think, two companies or three, and we were so excited about it. And now there's just tremendous interest in this disease. And I think Sean's contributions are vital in this. Uh, we need the actual infrastructure to run clinical trials, and that's expensive and beyond the scope of this organization. So we have, collab we have collaborations with two such networks, the Accru Network coming from Mayo Clinic and the Cancer Research and Biostatistics Group coming from Seattle. Uh, trials, the, so Accru has now identified a biliary cohort and they will sp specifically enroll uh, uh, on those trials uh, for therapeutic uh, trials. And then um, the third and not the least is a very important piece which is the molecular uh, biorepository. And we, have, we are very fortunate to have Lewis Roberts, a very senior investigator from Mayo Clinic, who is in charge of the biorepository. Lewis, do you want to make a comment? Just briefly, I think just to mention that many of you here have probably heard over the years about this repository. I know you've all gotten emails from Nasra Giamma or Loretta Alote or Hawa Ali is here somewhere. Do you want to put stand up, Hawa? And um, Lorena Marcano is also probably here. Um, our goal really is to create a resource for the community of samples that we can use our primary project that we're working on right now is a genome-wide association study to study the inherited risk um, for cholangiocarcinoma. Um, to do that, we need lots and lots of samples from patients. Over the past three or four years, we've been doing that, th that collection, and I'm happy to say that we actually now have at Mayo Clinic over 2,000 samples from cholangiocarcinoma patients and about 300 from gallbladder cancer patients. So our hope is that within another two 
months or so, we'll begin the genotyping of those samples to compare um, to uh, patients without cholangiocarcinoma to see if we can identify regions in the genome that confer increased risk of cholangiocarcinoma. Um, the other thing that we've been talking about looking forward is beginning to gather a virtual repository of tissue samples. At Mayo, we've been able, um, with help from our, our GI center there, to create some tissue microarrays of tissue samples resected from patients who had surgery at Mayo. We would like to roll this out really to the entire community and make a community resource of tissue samples that researchers can use um, for their projects as well. So very happy to, t you know, for if you are in, in, in a center and have interest in joining this collaboration, we, the 2,000 samples came from over 24 centers. We're very interested in including more centers. And if you're a researcher and you're looking for samples, please see us. We're very interested also in supplying samples to the community um, for your projects. Thanks. Thank you, Louis. Uh, while we're running out of time, just a couple of minutes, is that we are looking for more institutions and more partners in this network. So if this sounds interesting, please join hands with us. Uh, and as I mentioned before, we cannot have, uh, we cannot conquer this disease unless we are actually there in Asia and collaborating with our partners. So we are going to have a, a, a parallel conference or uh, within the next six weeks in Bangkok in Thailand. And this is sponsored, uh, I don't have a pointer here, but what's interesting is one of the uh, sponsors of this conference who has played a key role was a, pharma, was a former uh, recipient of a fellowship award from, uh, I think the first recipient of the fellowship award by the Cholangiocarcinoma Foundation, uh, Su Pong. So this investment, uh, you know, has, um, has long-term benefits. And now, six years later, Su Pong has helped us to, to have this conference in Thailand. We already have 150 pay, uh, uh, attendees uh, from Japan, Myanmar, Taiwan, China. So uh, it's a beautiful time of the year, so you all come down. Um, and I'm going to take a couple of minutes now uh, to have uh, uh, Mitesh present our goals for 2017. from Milind about the um, purpose of establishing this research network. Uh, uh, there's been incredible amount of energy and enthusiasm from many folks who come, who've come here every year uh, willing to collaborate. Uh, this research network will provide sort of the infrastructure and, um, and, <clears throat> and scaffold upon which to uh, build upon these. If we are not able to translate the discoveries that you guys heard about in, in the morning into the clinic and available to doctors anywhere, uh, the mission of uh, sort of this group will not be met to its fullest extent. So uh, our hope is that this will provide a, a nimble, fast uh, way for getting uh, drugs approved uh, through industry academic collaborations. And we're out outlining a few ambitious goals here for uh, this coming year. So we found, uh, number one, that Every trial seems to have their own assay. Patients have to undergo tissue sampling multiple times, and uh, we would like to help uh, be an advocate for uh, trying to limit the number of times this happens and, and work with the FDA, work with companies to see if we can come with uh, a shared uh, sampling and profiling. Um, this disease uh, has not been recognized as its own entity uh, in, in larger circles, so we're hoping that collaborating with large organizations such as ASCO, uh, guidelines for management of this disease can be crafted, uh, and, and you saw some of Renuka's work, uh, if we could do this in every realm of the disease, whether it's diagnosis, therapy, et cetera. Uh, from uh, Sean, you heard a bit about industry night. Uh, we're, we're hoping that this becomes a annual and successful program. Uh, Publications uh, from collaborations will follow, uh, the meeting you heard about in terms of international outreach. And we're hoping that um, as this group does good work and becomes successful, that this will be reflected uh, through peer-reviewed uh, grant applications, which can sort of provide stable funding to this type of work. Thank you very much, Mitesh and uh, Louis.